If you like what you see, please like and share the video, and subscribe to the channel, turning on all notifications. If you would like to support this channel in any way, please do so through Buy Me a Coffee. The link is in the description. Those who have bought coffees since the premiere of my last video and the recording of this one are someone and Zachary Newcomb, who said, I have watched most of all your videos, and even as a cradle Catholic that has done a lot of research in the last six years, I have learned so much. I greatly appreciate your references to Scripture in defense of our lost brothers and sisters that have been led astray in what is their typical arguments. God bless you, and thank you. You can also like and follow us on Facebook. The link for that is also in the description. Bishop Bernard Tissier de Malare of the Society of St. Pius X has passed away recently, and while this news was unexpected and we need to pray for his soul, I'm going to ask the question that's on everyone's mind. Is it time for the SSPX to consecrate bishops with or without Rome's approval? Rumors have circulated over the last year or so that the SSPX is preparing to consecrate bishops. Other rumors say that Pope Francis is willing to allow the SSPX to consecrate one or more bishops. Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre consecrated four bishops in 1988, Bernard Fillet, Bernard Tissier de Malare, Richard Williamson, and Alfonso de Galareta. Bishop Williamson was removed from the society and started his own version called the SSPX Resistance, and with the passing of Bishop de Malare, that leaves two bishops for the SSPX who aren't getting any younger. Of course, they aren't that old yet. They are 66 and 67, but people do die in their 60s, and of course, anything can happen. The SSPX is two heartbeats away from never ever having another bishop. Were the unthinkable to happen, and both men were to die before consecrating new bishops, the society would carry on for a while, offering baptisms, weddings, confessions, and masses to the faithful until at least the last priest ordained in the society dies too. Because only bishops can ordain priests, and in a situation where bishops do not have jurisdiction, only they can confirm the faithful. It's either that or the society would have to accept a Novus Ordo bishop or a Took bishop. Neither option would be acceptable to the society today. Archbishop Lefebvre felt that he needed four bishops for the society in 1988. Today, the SSPX is much bigger and more spread out. And from what I've seen when looking at the confirmation schedule, the running around was done mainly by Bishops Fillet and Tissier de Malare. Does this mean that now Bishop Fillet has to cover the entire world for ordinations and confirmations? Probably not, but still, that's an awful lot for two men to handle. So that settles it. The SSPX needs to consecrate more bishops, right? Well, yes, they do need to eventually, but there's more to consider. They are not sede vacantists. The SSPX recognizes the Pope and his authority, even his authority to grant or deny permission to consecrate bishops, believe it or not. If they didn't, they would have been consecrating bishops all along. Extraordinary circumstances must be present to justify disobedience to the Pope. Those circumstances were present in 1988. Archbishop Lefebvre was about to die, and Rome was clearly stalling him on consecrating a bishop. They offered him unacceptable terms and refused to give him a solid date. Archbishop Lefebvre knew that if he waited on Rome, he would die before consecrating a bishop, and the Society of St. Pius X would eventually either fold or get incorporated into the Novus Ordo, and the Latin Mass and the tradition of the Church would have been, for all intents and purposes, lost. There truly was a state of necessity. But does that same state of necessity exist today? Now let's not kid ourselves into believing that there is no longer a state of necessity in the overall sense. I'm asking about the urgency that was present in 1988. Is it present today? Just because we now have the TLM, FSSP, ICK, and others, including St. Vicontis groups, all of which sprang from Lefebvre, either directly or indirectly, that doesn't mean there is no longer a need for the society. So a perpetual state of necessity exists to ordain priests until there are enough priests to fulfill the need, which will probably never happen. It's not just about the Latin Mass, it's also about the constant tradition of the Church. The former Ecclesia Dei groups like the FSSP and ICK have had to accept the errors of Vatican II, and if the society goes away, so do they, because Rome will no longer have any use for them. Their entire purpose, at least when it comes to Rome, is to keep people out of the SSPX. So that leaves the set of Hope you don't have a problem with took consecrations. Not saying that I do, 
but there are a lot of people who do. Now, I personally like Bishop Piverunas, and he's a real bishop as far as I'm concerned. I can accept the Took consecrations as valid without being a set of a contest. At least I accept some of them. I don't know if I accept all of them. But that's the point, isn't it? If you want that sweet spot where you get the Latin Mass, the constant tradition of the church, unquestionably valid sacraments from unquestionably valid priests and bishops who properly recognize Rome, you're not going to get that anywhere but the SSPX. Now you might say, well, what about Bishop Williamson? He's consecrated four, perhaps even more bishops. They're unquestionably valid. True, but good luck. Look, I like Bishop Williamson. Watching his lectures on YouTube is one of the reasons I'm at the SSPX today. But I've tried to find information on the resistance, not to attend, but because I want to do videos on various traditional Catholic groups. So don't freak out if you see videos from me about Archbishop Took, the SSPV, CMRI, FSSP, etc. that aren't hit pieces. But I can't find a whole lot of information on the resistance. I find that Bishop Williamson has consecrated bishops. Father Hukos and the SSPX Marian Corps is in a few places. Bishop Pfeiffer is in the Took line for some reason, and now Father Hukos has denounced him. But as far as a history and who came from who, nothing. No one has the organizational structure and presence that the SSPX has. If you go to an SSPX chapel, you know what you're going to get. If you go to an independent chapel, good luck. So we need the SSPX. But like I said, is that same urgency that was present in 1988 present today? Is this is difficult for two old men to do good enough? I don't know. And that's not for me to decide. Another consideration is this. If the society does consecrate bishops without Rome's approval, all the goodwill and progress the society has made with Rome over the last almost 20 years goes out the window. And so do the faculties for confession and marriages, most likely. And nobody wants that. Priests and faithful will leave. Groups will split off yet again. But the society will survive and, in the end, become stronger. Of course, the Pope of Surprises could just give permission to the society to consecrate bishops without demands of accepting Vatican II, the new Mass, and whatever monstrosity comes out of the Synod on Synod on Synodality. But that's not very likely. A Bishop Strickland type could come over, conditionally reconsecrated, or a Williamson consecrated bishop could cross over. Rome wouldn't like it, but it's probably not a deal breaker. The society could always say, okay, fine, let us consecrate bishops then. Again, not very likely. The death of Bishop Tissier de Malare is concerning for the society's future, and yes, they will have to eventually consecrate bishops. Let's pray that it will be done with Rome's approval. But if not, that God will guide the leadership of the SSPX to do so at the proper time. Until my next video, God bless.